our legislature is bicameral. That means it has two chambers or two houses. Uh, hopefully you already knew that. Um, the first is the House. There's 435 members who serve two-year terms. Uh, the House, of course, is based on population, so different states have different numbers of reps. Uh, they, initi they must initiate all revenue bills. Any spending or taxing, those bills have to start in the House. And so the House actually has more influence on the budget. Uh, the House is also dominated by something called the House Rules Committee, which I'm going to explain uh, in detail. And the House has limits on, a lot of limits actually, on what the House members can do. Uh, debate as well as amendments to bills are limited. Um, House members are typically only given five minutes to speak on a bill if they choose to. The Senate, on the other hand, has 100 members who serve six-year terms of office. Uh, you have to be 25 to be in the House, 30 to be in the Senate. And the Senate plays a key role in, in giving advice and consent to the President meaning that when the president makes appointments or proposes treaties, um, the Senate has to approve, uh, it, which makes the Senate very, very crucial in the president putting the people he wants into place uh, in the government and also in getting uh, and dealing with foreign policies. The Senate also has unlimited debate. Uh, senators can stand up and speak as long as they want. We're going to talk about the filibuster a lot in a little bit. Uh, but senators used to have the ability to stand up and start talking and refuse to yield the floor and talk as long as they want in an attempt to kill a bill or shut down the whole uh, senatorial process, uh, which is something that they used to do. Uh, we'll talk about what that looks like today because that's changed a lot. So we're continuing on our uh, chart here. The House is led by the Speaker of the House, and the Speaker is elected by all the members of the House. But, of course, if you've got the majority of the House, all your members line up behind one person, and so whichever party is in the majority in the House picks the Speaker. They preside over the House, meaning they're literally the person standing up there with the gavel calling on who gets to speak. But more importantly, they decide who goes on to what committee, or they play the major role in that. And even more important than that, they decide which legislation gets discussed. Now, this is where the power is, because uh, if, if you're the Speaker, you don't bring up bills that you don't want passed. So even if everybody in, the, in, the, in the, the House wants to pass it but you, if you never put it on the calendar and if it never comes up for discussion, it can't get passed. That's the crucial role. They also put rules on bills. We want to talk about what rules means. It doesn't mean quite what you think it means. <laughs> they are assisted by the majority leader and the whip. Uh, there's also a minority leader and a minority whip. Uh, but honestly, uh, the majority party in the House has pretty much all the power. In the Senate, the Senate is formally led by the Vice President. The Vice President is the President of the Senate, but he doesn't do much. He really just casts votes to break ties. In reality, it's led by the Majority Leader, who's chosen by the party members of the Majority Party. Uh, there's also a Minority Leader, and they have a lot more power. The minority Leaders in the Senate actually have some degree of power. Uh, there are also Minority and Majority Whips, um, uh, uh, but in the Senate, and if the Senate's going to get anything done, there has to be some compromise between the two parties. In the House, the party in power can pretty much bulldoze through whatever it wants. It's important that you memorize this chart, that you understand this chart. Um, the top stuff there is pretty simple. Uh, power is much more centralized in the House, uh, where in the Senate, individual senators have a lot more ability to get things done. Um, it is more prestigious to be a senator than a congressman. Um, uh, the House tends to be more focused on the budget, uh, whereas the Senate tends to be more focused on uh, foreign affairs um, and appointments. The turnover in the House is, is very small. Uh, uh, once people get into the House, they tend to stay there for a while. Whereas in the Senate, you have a decent chance of actually losing election. Seniority is very important in the House of Representatives. Being in there for a long time is how you get power, typically. Uh, whereas in the Senate, it's not that important. Procedurally, what's really important is the limited debate in the House and the unlimited debate in the Senate. In the Senate. Um, House members are only allowed to talk for brief periods of time. Could be five minutes, could be two minutes, could be three minutes. Senators can talk as long as they want, uh, which ends up giving them a significant power we'll get to later, the filibuster. The other key thing here is that when you propose amendments to a bill, in the House they have to be related to the bill. If it's an agriculture bill, you couldn't propose an abortion amendment. Whereas the, that's called the germaneness requirement. Uh, amendments must be germane. Whereas in the Senate, they don't have to be related in any way to the bill. There's no germaneness requirement. So if somebody's proposing a bill on uh, defense spending, you can slap a bill on abortion right in the middle of that, and that's totally okay. And they do that all the time as a way of killing bills um, or trying to get something that they want passed. 
both are divided into committees and subcommittees. Uh, it, 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 there's lots of different types of committees. A standing committee is a committee committee that is always there. Um, standing committees are, are created in such a way that hopefully they can handle anything that comes up and every bill will be assigned to a committee, usually a standing committee. A joint committee um, is, is a, a, a special committee created by pulling members from the House and the Senate to work on a particular issue. We're going to look at examples of these in just a minute. If a bill passes the House and the Senate but in different forms, it got amended, it got marked up and changed, then a conference committee is, is formed to turn it into one bill because it has to pass the House and the Senate in identical form. Um, and so when it doesn't do that, the conference committee resolves that bill into one form, and so it has members of both the House and the Senate. Select committees are created for a very limited, focused, temporary purpose. Uh, for example, when we invested in Nixon's uh, activities in Watergate, they created a, a select committee to do that. Uh, when they were worried that all the computers would stop working on January 1st, 2000, we created a select committee to deal with that. Um, uh, there's a select committee right now on aging as the baby boomers uh, move uh, into their retirement age. What, what are we going to do about that? <laughs> Here's examples of committees. And you see there, uh, this, these are the standing committees. These are the committees that are always there. And if, if a bill gets promos, proposed into uh, uh, either the Senate or the House, it will go into one of these committees and be handled at that level. The committees provide, uh, create legislation and provide oversight. Legislation. Committees work on 11,000 bills, more than 11,000 bills, every session. They hold hearings to get expert testimony or to have uh, impacted parties give their say. They mark up the bill. Um, that means they change it. So you may propose a bill as one thing, but it may get marked up to be something that, that you barely recognize. Um, they also provide legislative oversight. They investigate the activities of the other branches of government. Sometimes this is used towards political ends. Uh, Daryl Issa, who is the current head of the uh, House Oversight Committee, promised that he was going to unveil, unveil a scandal a week on the Obama administration when he, got, when he got put in that job. Now, you may think that the correct procedure is to find a scandal and investigate it, but Issa seemed to think the correct procedure was to uh, uh, create a scandal and then launch an investigation or, or invent a scandal. Uh, but, of course, it also serves important functions. Um, they look at budgets, make sure uh, money's not being spent uh, irresponsibly, or hopefully they do that. Uh, they investigate real scandals like Watergate. Um, but this is the oversight uh, function of Congress. Um, oversight usually takes place after some disaster. Uh, so maybe we have an adequate response to a hurricane like Hurricane Katrina. Uh, was widely seen this way. We might have a, an oversight committee to figure out what happened and then there'll be lots of blame point, uh, giving and finger pointing and stuff like that. Getting on a committee is crucial. Getting the committee assignment that you want is vital to you being powerful in Congress. Um, and this means you need to make nice with the leadership. Uh, if you're from an agricultural state like Iowa, let's say, you want to be on the Agriculture Committee, it doesn't really help you to be on a committee that deals with issues that are maybe uh, more useful to fishing um, or something like that. So your popularity with the leadership of, of your party in Congress is going to determine your committee assignment, and your committee assignment is going to determine how effective a, a, a member of Congress you are. Now, there are certain committees everybody wants to be on. Uh, if it's a committee that spends a lot of money, like defense or uh, appropriations, everybody wants to be on those committees. Uh, there are certain committees that nobody wants to be on. Nobody wants to be on the Ethics Committee. And nobody wants to be on the committee that decides how we're going to raise revenue through taxation. Uh, because people don't like taxes, so if you're on that committee, they're, in our, they're inevitably going to get mad at you. And if you're on the ethics committee, you have the choice of either uh, doing what the people want, which is uh, busting crooked uh, members of Congress, uh, or whoever it may be, or doing what your colleagues want and not investigating that and becoming unpopular in Congress. Uh, so what committee you get put on is really, really important. Uh, new members often have to struggle, they have to wait their turn to get on the committees they want. But by loyally supporting your, the House, uh, uh, Speaker of the House or the Majority Leader or Minority Leader, depending on who your party is, um, you can work your way up into a nice committee assignment. <clears throat> Once you get on the committee, you want to be the committee chair if possible. This is the most important member of the committee. Uh, the committee chairs of those powerful committees are some of those powerful people in our government. The committee of the uh, the committee chair 
of the um, uh, of, of the committees that, that determine the budget of the of the appropriations committees in the House and the Senate are incredibly important people, and people have no idea that's true. They get to schedule the hearings, they get to hire the staff, they create the subcommittees, and they manage the bills. Just like the speaker doesn't have to bring up bills in the House, the committee chairs don't have to bring up bills in their committees. Usually chairs are selected, uh, you get to be the chair by being the senior member of the majority party. Now it used to be this was always the case, but there was significant reform, uh, really led by Lyndon Johnson when he was in Congress, uh, to allow committees to vote on who will be their leader. The tradition is you pick the senior member of the majority party, uh, but there are cases now where that person gets passed up. Um, but typically you need to be on that committee for quite a while before you're going to become a chair of it. All right, and that's what I got to say about committees.